Hello, this is Ben Hollifield, bringing you a quick introduction to a new app for ServiceNow called TableSaw. Um, now, whenever we're building out new customer environments, um, especially CMS portals, a lot of times a customer wants to have a particular kind of view for their records, um, a customized uh, sort of a table view for their data. And it feels like we're often rebuilding this time after time from scratch um, to meet customers' expectations. And it's not a simple thing to do. Um, depending on the complexity of the view, building a new data view could take um, hours, days, um, even weeks in some cases. So what TableSaw is attempting to do is to make it a little bit easier to provide customized data views to your end users. So uh, let's look at an instance here where this is already installed. So once you install TableSaw, um, you'll see we got a new um, section over here on the left nav called table saw with, with a few different sections. Um, the top three are the basics for table saw configuration. You have table views, uh, filter sections and filters. The rest of these are just the components that make up table saw and you can dig into those as you as you need to to customize. So if we come to table views, we'll see we have a couple of samples here and let's look at this one called knowledge. This is nothing more than a customized view for knowledge data. Um, if you look here, you can see that we do have some annotations on each form, so I recommend that you look at these to see what things mean and have a better understanding of, of what needs to be done to create your own. But the configuration is quite simple. You give each, uh, each table view a name, you tell it which table we're using, and then here we have fields required. These are the fields that you intend to display in your new customized table view. Um, and we do this so that we can make sure we only send back and forth the data between the server and the client that we need to. So it makes this lightning fast and super lightweight. Um, then a few other things. You have the results per page. We do paginate the results so you can um, establish how many results you want to have. A renderer, which I'll show you in a moment, is an HTML renderer for the results. So you can give your results any kind of look and feel you like. And then we have a base query. Um, this is the basic query for the data that appears on that page um, and nothing more than what you allow by this query will ever, ever show up so we can tailor what we allow our, our users to see. And then finally down here at the bottom we have filter sections. So one of the nice things about table saw is not only does it provide a display of table data, it also provides a filter widget so you can um, sort of curate certain filters that your users might need and you can place those filters into a sidebar into the filter widget. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So we have this test table view button here. We'll click that to render this table view. And instantly we come into the view. Now if we look, we see on the left hand side here we have the results pane. This is just a list of results. And as you can see in this case it's just knowledge records. Um, over here on the right hand side we have a filter results widget. And this is all mobile responsive. This according goes up and down. This looks great on a, um, on a desktop or on a mobile device um, and the filters and everything work just the same so if we want to start filtering things we can go ahead and sort this on by created by if we like uh, we got some top authors here so we can fil filter by these authors and as soon as we click these the filters are, are happening in real time uh, we can also have some popular filters outlined here um, categories what, whatever you like um, all this is available including just a plain text search which is very useful so one of the first questions you may have is, is what exactly is involved in configuring these filters. So let me show you real fast. If we go back, we can see again down here in the filters, we have our list of filters that we've created. Let's dig into one of these and see what it looks like. Let's choose the, um, the popular section. So if we look here, we'll see that we do have the name for the filter section, and then we have a, a type of filter, and we provide a, a series of popular filter types, checkboxes, uh, choice, free text, icons, radio buttons, switches. You choose what you like, um, give it an order so it shows up, and then we define what filters actually exist inside this filter section. Um, in this case, we see it's, it's the source of the filter is a related list, and that allows us to, to configure statically defined filters. And if we dig into one of these, like for instance email, we see that all that's happening is we're giving this a name. And then we're using a condition builder to say what query this is going to add on to the current pile of data we have. We're saying if the text contains email or if the short description contains email, then, then that's what this will filter out of our overall data. Um, if we come back, we can see that we don't have to use related lists. For each of these, we're just using um, statically defined conditions that are all very similar. Short description contains laptop, text contains laptop. They're all kind of the same. We do have the capability to script filters. And so if you have tables of data, for instance, let's go look at the um, top authors 
filter. If we look at that one, that is a script defined filter. And what we're actually doing is we're going out and finding, using a glide aggregate, the top authors in our knowledge base. And every load time, we're, we're reloading that list. So we always have a list of the top authors. And then inside of those filters, we're doing an encoded query of the author is that particular person. So it's very flexible and very dynamic in the way you can define these different filters. So that's where the data comes from. Um, one of the most important things about Table Saw is the ability to give um, these data views your own look and feel and to brand them the way you want to for your own portals. And that all happens here in the renderer. We're including this sample KB view renderer, but you can build whatever you like. And once you get in here, you'll see this is nothing more than a UI macro with HTML and Jelly. Um, we see we can apply different CSS styles in here. And then we actually just have HTML that builds out how these things look. Here's the filter widget being built. And then down here is the results pane. And so you can come in here, use the fields that you've defined on those records that you're pulling data from and build your own HTML, use your own CSS and give it a completely customized look and feel. And this is actually Angular markup inside um, inside this UI macro. So if you know AngularJS, you can make a very rich sort of interactive um, data experience for your users um, within these. So you can create any number of different renderers for your different table views and use those in different sections of your site. And everything you need to edit is right here. We we filtered it out. So here are the UI macros. Um, here's the sample KB view renderer that we're using for the KB page. In addition, we have separate renders for each one of the filter types. So if you don't like the way the icon filters look, you can come in here and actually customize this and make your own. Um, so there's an extreme amount of flexibility here, and this vastly simplifies the initial build out, and then the ongoing maintenance of these kinds of views for. Um, for your service now in the regular interface, but especially in the CMS portals. This is where this really shines. So I hope you guys find this useful. Um, the render we built here for knowledge is really basic. Um, we're really excited to see the, the rich, um, more visual, dynamic experiences that you guys come up with out in the field. Thanks a lot.